Welcome to Ask Cadence, everybody. My name is Pete Wright, and I'm sitting around the table as uh, as usual recently with John Patton. Hello, John. Hello, Pete. You're looking great today. Thank you very much. And, and you, sir. And tanned. Oh, well, the vacation has been good to me. Thank you great. very much. And Jay Christensen, welcome back. Glad to be in your company, Pete. I, you guys are too nice to me today. I'm, I'm, I'm blushing a little bit. The, the problem we have today uh, off of the problem card is this. We have too many external influences on the project, making it difficult to baseline the project to move forward. Uh, John, can you help frame that uh, a little bit? What do we mean? Here? Yes, uh, there. Let's let's frame the most typical situation, uh, Pete, and why this occurs. Most frequently, I have seen that the project is born in a function inside the organization. Uh, this could be a, a dominant function or a function that is uh, very focused in its purpose and that the project has gotten authorized within that function at a fairly high level without building consensus outside the function. Now in this case, it, there can be a combination of uh, multiple sponsors for this project. The, the functional sponsor in this dominant organization or uh, a uh, very focused organization may have most of the resources, but it still depends uh, on uh, resources outside the organization, meaning that there will be multiple sponsors and the beneficiary is also outside the organization. So the, the common term is that the project has been railroaded without getting support, and now the team is being taxed with building support as we go and they aren't getting it and it's it's a highly frustrating situation for project teams because you feel like you're being torn every which way and there are scope changes being requested and scope definition isn't even complete yet in your project plan. So you're being forced and, and, and tasked with this political behemoth that you know gets in the way of actually delivering the work of the project. Yes, That's and the team are. members especially want to go to work. Sure. And the project manager wants to lead, and there's gonna, you're going to need a pretty good project manager to pull this one out. Example of that is a situation I encountered some time ago, and uh, that is kind of sad in a way. Uh, what had happened was is that the project manager had been assigned in the research phase, which is the third phase of our project life cycle. And this person had done all of the steps within the research phase correctly and had done a very good job of documenting the research results and then got into planning of the project with the project team. That was all done very properly. And then uh, the team started delivering project results and started producing deliverables. And as soon as the deliverables began to appear, there was a firestorm started. And the reason that the firestorm came about is because there were stakeholders in the organization that had not been contacted during the research phase. They had been left out of the interviews in terms of the scope of the project. And now that they saw the results coming, they saw that they were not being included and not being um, um, have, uh, not having their needs met by this project result. So they uh, then began to complain to the project team, complain to the sponsor, and uh, actually uh, stalled the project very severely. So this was a case where the research phase was done, but it was not done in a broad enough fashion, not including enough people in the organization or even external to the organization to see what external stakeholders might be affected by this project. So it's, it's sort of a life cycle problem. It's kind of a scope of the life cycle. Am I, I, I'm not quite sure how to frame that. Well, uh, yes, Pete, and, and in Jay's example, um, it's found after the fact. I mean, we've been working and delivering, uh, start to deliver scope items and uh, find out that we're heading in the wrong direction. Or in the, in the minds of certain key stakeholders, we're heading in the wrong direction. There is a single solution to this one that we're pretty unanimous in recommending and that is that you hold a project review. So you get all these people together. You have to identify 
who the complete set of stakeholders and sponsors for this project are. Which may be most of the work in a case like it this. It is, and it could be a big meeting, yeah. Pete, because it's the bosses of the team members, it's these stakeholders, and the project manager uh, gives a status report that's got to be less than 15 minutes, and then presents the total scope of the project. Now, after that, all questions and comments are fair game, and changes to the scope will be run through scope change control. So if scope is going to change, then it will be accompanied by change orders and a new resulting cost schedule and performance, a new scope for the project uh, is probably going to result, and the benefit of, of running this through scope change control is that we will see the amount of rework that we'll need to do and the amount of remaining work on the project. Now this, this activity may cause the project to go back to reauthorization. Given what we know today, uh, after this, uh, this special project review meeting, should we continue the project? In fact, uh, John, there may be uh, an opportunity for another outcome uh, as a result of the project review, and that may be to proceed with the project as it is currently scoped as phase one of the project outcomes, and then uh, identify subsequent phases that would be done at a later time in a separate project or a number of projects that would address more of the stakeholders involved. Excellent, Jay. You know, the uh, what we're working on may be the foundation set or with just a little adjustment, uh, the foundation of something very good for the company. And uh, what it's doing is it's stimulating the thinking and the creativity of the people and this could lead to a much better way of doing business. In fact, it may even help with the definition of the scope for those additional projects since we've done the exploratory work in the first project. And usually these, um, uh, this project review isn't more than four hours, but if run properly uh, in, in, and uh, facilitated well, uh, and if, if an uh, organizational development OD person is available for this, uh, or an outside professional is used as, as the uh, neutral OD person uh, to facilitate the session, uh, the result can be quite good. Uh, very good results in very short time. In fact, the facilitator to support that, John, the facilitator must understand that uh, this is possibly an acrimonious meeting, but that uh, nothing is off limits. Uh, everything is available for discussion. Uh, and um, there are decisions that are made as a result of people being open and honest and forthright with their assessment of where the project is at. And one thing a good facilitator can do is to keep all the interaction and, uh, and commentary on a professional level. So uh, personal insults uh, or um, you know descriptors uh, would certainly be out of uh, uh, out of scope here. It is um, in in some cultures that could happen, uh, but in in most cases, if we start out on a professional level, uh, the facilitator can certainly maintain that. Because the objective here is transparency, not blame. Yes, yes. And that usually will turn a situation like this um, around. Yeah, and, and Pete, uh, the team. Uh, should be reassured uh, in a public environment that they did not perform badly, that they are to be punished, but that uh, this was the natural outcome of a uh, process that wasn't perhaps observed as thoroughly as it should have been at the corporate or the organizational level rather than specifically at the team level. That's a, I think that's a very important point. It probably wouldn't take long to feel like a scolding. Well, thank you for another uh, great discussion, gents. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been an illuminating talk. And to all of you who have downloaded, thank you so much for doing so. Until next week, this has been Ask Cadence.